surface ocean currents are caused by planetary winds. So planetary winds move the ocean currents. Essentially, they're a stream of water that circulates within the ocean basin. Now, we have two types of ocean currents, uh, surface currents. They're either cold ocean currents or warm ocean currents. Now, uh, under normal conditions, when we focus on, say, the South Pacific Ocean, on the west coast of South America or the Peru uh, current, the Peru current is going to be cold. So the waters off the coast of the west, off the west coast of South America is going to be cold. Now that warm, that cold ocean current, it goes up the coast, hits the equator, and move towards the west, towards Australia, and eventually transition to a warm ocean current. And this is what normally happens under normal conditions. Now, so as mentioned, normal conditions, upwelling, you have upwelling along the west coast of South America. So what happens when you have this large movement of water, okay, on the, on the surface water, that water is essentially is displaced. So you need to replace that displaced water with another mass of water. So that mass of water comes from, from, from the depths of the ocean. And this is what you call upwelling. So upwelling is just a mass of water that's coming from deeper, deeper within the ocean towards the surface. Now, as the colder water upwells, it brings along nutrients to the surface. And those nutrients is uh, food for the local, uh, the local fisheries. And with that said, when you have uh, an abundance of, of fish in the area, you have, uh, you have commerce in terms of uh, fishing, and, and you have, essentially, you have a local economy. Now, sometimes, sometimes warm waters will migrate back or move towards the east, All right? So instead of the warmer waters moving west across the Pacific Ocean, it migrates back east. And in this situation, it's called an El Nino. It's called an El Nino, or sometimes it's called Enzo. Now, typically, El Nino occurs, uh, it begins to occur around, around December. Now, with that said, El Nino, when you have El Nino conditions, weather patterns is going to change. So more more of a wet climate you're going to have a more of a wet climate in the northwestern part of South America and also you're going to have more of a uh, a wet climate in the southern part of North America in the southwest areas like Texas the Gulf states Florida in Australia Australia their temperatures or their weather will become more warm and dry. And if you look further, if you go, say, look to, towards Africa, the southern eastern half of Africa is going to be warm and dry, warm and dry conditions. And that's during the, the winter months of December towards February. Now, sometimes you have another condition, La Nina. Now, La Nina is when the warm ocean waters are much further, much further west than the normal conditions. And this also shifts weather conditions, okay, or weather patterns. So for example, in the, the south, the southern part of North America or the United States, instead of a wet climate, it's going to be warm and dry. And this is during the winter season. And in the northwest part of South America is going to be cool and dry. But in the area of, in the area of Australia, New Zealand, um, the Philippines, you're going to have more of a wet climate. And if you look further towards Africa, as aforementioned, the southeastern part of Africa, 
instead of having a warm and dry climate, you're going to have a cooler climate. So these are the, uh, these are the various effects that El Nino and La Nina have on local weather.